We came up with the idea of buying one, and I said to my son, let's first just try using the current silage pusher every two hours for a week. And we'll see how well it works. We didn't last a day because it doesn't work that way. And it's not really the principle of a robotic feed pusher. Because that pushes the feed a little bit at a time. With a traditional silage pusher, you push it all at once. And that really makes a difference. I'm convinced of that. The feed supply is more constant, I think. Because if you push it with a silage pusher, you often push it all toward the fence at once. And now it's pushed forward a little bit at each time. And that keeps the feed fresher. And with a silage pusher, with us, it wasn't every two hours, but maybe five times a day. And you have to do it yourself. Sometimes you're away for a day and someone else has to do it, or it doesn't happen that day. Now, it always happens. You really get the idea that it needs to be pushed. That's important. If you buy a pushing robot, it has nothing to do with pushing. It's a sort of management instrument. Maybe a feed pushing robot's the wrong word. It's actually a feed management robot or a feed control robot. You can't really compare it to a silage pusher or a scraper. We've only had one small malfunction. Now and then you have one of those dank days with damp weather, wet weather. The feed alley can get quite slippery. And if you feed once every two days, you might have a large pile lying there on the first day. And then it slipped, missed two transponders and stopped working. Same thing happened the next day. So I said, there's a fault. Well, it turned out not to be a fault, but because of the pile of feed, we flattened out the pile with a mixer wagon. Once this had been pulled apart, everything was fine. I didn't know that then, but I know better now. We moved all the transponders in that area 10 centimeters to one side, and since then we've had no more problems. That was the only issue. It was also a chance to learn about the machine. The transponders, where are they? Here's one. Then every 2.5 meters. It's just a small hole in the concrete. Just a small dot, about six millimeters, I think. Here's another one. You can just about see them here. And every 2.5 meters. And you can find them if you start looking, but actually you never notice them. You also make use of metal grazing. How does that work? The feed pusher robot in combination with metal grazing? Actually, if you make use of metal grazing, you might think that you don't need a feed pusher robot, but that's not true. Because the feed pusher robot, I have to say that we keep them inside at night, it's not pure metal grazing. That makes a difference, of course. We always give them extra feed at night. It also allows more targeted feeding, I think. Now I know the exact number of kilos to use with the mixer wagon. You look at your grass outside, then you adapt your indoor feed ration to that. But you know that it's always there. Of course, cows prefer regularity and that there's always something to eat. You can really benefit from this. Even with meadow grazing, I'm convinced of that. Now and then it does stop working. It has quite a lot of trouble with yearlings, I think. Yearlings are like teenagers, they tend to ram against the robot. I had a bull here last winter, it's still here. A half Jersey, also a stubborn creature. It rammed the robot and it stopped working. It was probably pushed to the side and then it stopped moving. But it bothers you when it stops moving. The machine should be moving or it should be at the charging station, but it shouldn't be faulty. Which brings me back to learning. If you do it properly, you minimize the chance of faults, you minimize the chance of annoyances. I wouldn't give it up for anything, nothing.